You know what I was talking about today? Do you remember what I had? 72, I believe. I number 71. 70? Okay, yeah. Then that will be it. Okay. That one I know for sure. It's a little bit in doubt. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله أولئك سيرحمهم الله إن الله عزيز حكيم. Respected elders and brothers, last week we started from المنافقون والمنافقات, which was ayat number sixty-seven. Today we're doing ayat number seventy-one. We're starting from there. And last week, if you remember, Allah Taala had mentioned that the hypocrite males and hypocrite females. Those who are professing Islam, but they actually don't believe, uh, they are one in their maqsad and purpose. Uh, they are telling people to do bad, and they are keeping people away from the good. And Allah Ta'ala then mentioned a whole bunch of sifat and qualities and things that they were doing. And Allah Ta'ala also mentioned there that these people are nothing like the people from before. Meaning, they are like the people from the before in the way that they're rejecting the Nabi, but Allah Ta'ala had blessed the people of before with a lot of ni'mats and blessings. So they could have, even though they weren't able to, and they will never be able to, but they could have brought as an excuse the fact that they had big houses and large houses and families, and this is what led them astray. And these munafiqeen living inside the desert, barely having anything, not so many children, not so much money, what would their excuse be? So they should be accepting Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, accepting his masjid, message and moving away from the faq and hypocrisy that they uh, profess to the and they say to the other people that they believe but actually they don't believe. So Allah Ta'ala likened them to those people from before. After this Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned the believers, al-mu'minuna wal-mu'minat, those who are the believing men and the believing women, they are the exact antithesis and against uh, that which the munafiqeen stand for. So Allah Ta'ala says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ And those believing men and the believing women, بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ They are friends to one another. أَوْلِيَاء أَوْلِيَاء is different than a friend. A wali is someone who is always with you. One who has the same zihn. One who has the same mind frame. This is a wali. Actually the word wala yali in Arabic means to be close. <coughs> so Allah Ta'ala says that the mu'mineen, they are such that they are brothers and they are close and friends to one another, meaning their purpose and their maqsad and their outlook on life and the deen of Allah Ta'ala is one. What do they do? Ya'muruna bil ma'roof. They call towards goodness. They don't call towards bad things, but they are always giving da'wah to the people and calling them towards goodness. وَيَنْهُونَ عَنِ munkar, And they are stopping people from evil, which is one of the most important elements that Allah Ta'ala has put inside the mu'min. 
A mu'min is always someone who's calling towards good. Adalu ala al khair kafa'ilihi. The mu'min should always be knowing that if he tells someone to do good, it is like he is the one who does that good deed. So we are people who are always calling people towards good and keeping away from the bad in such a time. And also, always is such that the people are always calling towards evil and bad things and the desires and the lusts are such that it calls you towards bad. Even your own desires will call you towards bad. But iman, the demands of iman are such that every single mu'min should be calling people towards good and stopping from the evil. The calling towards the good, alhamdulillah, in the ummah that is wide and large. But yanhuna al munkar you find is rare. The people don't stop others from doing evil and stop people from doing bad. So this is something very, very important. And it takes the hikmah and it takes the wisdom also. And of course, it always uh, takes what we call ma'nus, ma'nusiyat. Meaning, when you stop someone from something, make sure that person knows you. You understand? If someone is doing something wrong, you never knew that person. So chances are, if you go and stop him from doing that thing and you tell him about it, then he's not going to take that well because he doesn't know you. Right? But if you shake his hand and salam and how are you, how's everything, and you get to get to know him and he gains a respect for you, then when you tell him to stop doing something, then alhamdulillah he'll listen to you. He will listen to you. So very important that in Yanhona and in Munkar, we have to be very careful about the hikmah and the wisdom that we don't turn people away from deen even farther away than where they are already. And with that also, they back it up with amal and the actions, they establish the prayer. And not only their bodily ibadat, not only the a'mal ibadaniyya, not only do they sacrifice their bodies, but that which is in their pockets, their money, the things that they love the most, their wealth, they sacrifice that also. And they give the zakat, they give the alms, they give the zakat in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيُطِيعُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And they obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أُولَٰئِكَ سَيَرْحَمُهُمُ اللَّهُ These are the people who Allah ta'ala very, in a very close time, very, uh, very soon, He will show mercy upon them, meaning on the day of Qiyamah and after they pass away, the pure rahmat of Allah ta'ala will be enshrouded over all of these people. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mighty. Allah Ta'ala is ghalibun ala amrihi. He is overpowering over everything that he does. He is like this that he can make an insan a believer. And he is like this that he can make an insan a disbeliever. He can punish uh, the disbeliever and he can give reward to the believer because he has power over everything that he does. He's aziz and he's hakim also. Why Allah Ta'ala has not made everyone one and made everyone a believer? Or why Allah Ta'ala had not made everyone a disbeliever and make everyone in one type of faith? This is the hikmat of Allah Ta'ala. He is the wise. He knows why he's done this. After this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes more deeper into that jannat and that rahmat that he will give the, the believer. Allah Ta'ala says, وَعَدُ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا مِن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً فِي جَنَّاتِ عَدْنٍ وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرٌ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Allah Ta'ala then mentions that He has promised the believing men and the believing women. Here Allah Ta'ala in both ways has said about the believing men and the believing women. Showing that this is not only for the males, it's for the females also. The Jannat Allah Ta'ala has made for the male. And the Jannat Allah Ta'ala has made for the female also. The rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are also equal with the men and the women as well. لِلْرِجَالِ مِنْ مَكْتَسَبُوا وَلِلْنِسَاءِ مِنْ مَكْتَسَبًا Allah Ta'ala says, for the men, whatever amal they did, they will get the reward. For the, the women, whatever amal they have done, they will get the reward also. The only tafawat and difference Allah Ta'ala has established in this world is who is the leader and who is the follower. And in this world, Allah Ta'ala has made the man the leader. He is the one who brings the risk home. He is the one who will go out and get the sustenance. He is the amir. He is the king. And the woman is his partner and under him. But in regards to rewards, if she prays tahajjud, actually, for the lady, there are many things that she doesn't have to do, but she will get higher rewards. The lady does not have to go out in jihad. The hajj is her jihad. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that that lady who prays five times salat and she obeys her husband and her husband is happy with her, she will enter into any door of Jannah she wants. That's all she has to do. Right? 
the difficulties on a lady are not like the man. The man has a lot more responsibilities. So sometimes a lady, when she prays in the house, in the corner of her house, ulama have taken from the hadith where the one, one uh, sahabiya came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I want to pray behind you in salat. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa directed her and said that it is better for you to pray in the corner of your house, in the innermost room in your house. This is better for you. The ulama there have instructed that when a lady prays, whilst we have to come to the masjid and walk so far, in the winter also we have to heat up the car and come, very, very difficult in the cold weather, walking long distances. We have to do, if we don't come to the masjid, we are in trouble. Those ladies come to the masjid, mashallah, they, they do it, but that's all extra for them. If they wanted to, they could have prayed in the corner of their houses. And from this hadith, ulama have taken out and said that that lady who prays in the small corner of her house, that place where you can't even see her, she gets the reward like she is praying behind Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah Ta'ala has not left out the women. Well, the, in all of these ayats you can see the believing men and the believing females. They will have gardens which underneath it the rivers are flowing. Tajri min tahti al-anhar. Underneath these beautiful gardens Allah Ta'ala has put water and beautiful rivers flowing. Khalidina fiha. It's not going to end. They will be there forever and ever. Wa masakina tayyiba. And the places of residence will be very, very beautiful. Beautiful houses in the Miraj Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw such beautiful houses, the houses that were in the trees even, and the houses made out of pearls and gold, and the, and the bricks made out of gold and silver, and the lining in between, and the mortar was made out of uh, musk, and, per and, and beautiful rubies, and all these different, men, something that a man cannot even, or a person cannot even imagine. Allah Ta'ala will make these beautiful places, masakin tayyibah. Fi jannati Adin in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Foreverness. Adin means Hamisha, foreverness. What is one of Minallahi Akbar? And the most uh, important thing and the greatest thing is the fact that Allah Ta'ala has made that ilan and has made that announcement that I will never be angry with you again. This is the announcement that will be given to those people of Jannah that all, I put you in this Jannah and all my slaves enjoy this Jannah. I, will, I am happy with you and I will never be angry with you again. This is the greatest thing. ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ And this is the great success. After this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more about the munafiqeen and how he should act towards them. Allah ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ جَاهِدِ الْكُفَّارَ وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ وَغْلُذْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرُ Allah Ta'ala says that, O oh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jahid al-Kuffar, those mushrik in Mecca who are giving you difficulty and they're giving you problems and they keep killing your friends and your family, you fight against them. You struggle against them and fight against them. It's no longer the days of Mecca Mukarrama. Now you're in Medina, you have followers, you have an army, you fight against them and battle them. Jahid al-Kuffar, wal munafiqeen, and those who are the hypocrites. Now the jihad of a kuffar and a munafiq is two different things the ulama have said. Yani jahid al-kuffar bil saif wa jahid al-munafiqeen bil lisanik. Fight the kuffar because they are open enemies to Islam and you can decipher which one is uh, true or not. So therefore, you fight them with your sword. But in regards to the munafiqeen, you fight them with your tongue. Nabi Islam speak against them. Hold up for yourself. When they come and they start asking for excuses or they say something wrong, you scold them and tell them about the detrimental effects of nifaq and how nifaq on the day of Qiyamah will be even worse than kufr. Inna al-munafiqeen fi darkil asfali min al-nar. Allah Ta'ala says, the munafiqeen, those who profess and say that we have iman, we believe in la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, but then when they go home and they sit with their shayateen and their evil friends, then they say, we don't believe in Allah, we don't believe in Rasul, and they start joking and mocking and devising plans against Islam, trickery. Allah Ta'ala says on the day of Qiyamah, they will be underneath those people who didn't believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. In the basement and the cellar of Jahannam they will be. O oh, Nabi Sassam, inform them. Do the jihad against the munafiqin like this, that you are telling them and speaking against them all the time. Wagluth alayhim. And speak harshly against them. Wagluth alayhim. Do not speak in a nice manner. No more of tandir, that now you are warning them all the time. Indar, that you are saying in a nice way. No, speak to them harshly. Scold them whenever you find they're doing something wrong. Or they say something against the sahaba or you. Then speak to them in a harsh manner and scold them and scream at them. So they know that this nifaq is something wrong and they may turn away from it. 
وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ Allah Ta'ala says, their abode is the fire of hell. The kuffar and the munafikeen, if they don't make tawbah, then they will end up in the fire of jahannam. Ma'wa is a place where a person lives. Awa ya'wi in the Arabic language means a place where we stay. So this ma'wahum jahannam is their abode. Their abode, their ending, their last stage is in the, is in the fire of jahannam. وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ بِئْسَ بِئْسَ means and so terrible is that abode. It's a very terrible place for a person to go. Allah Ta'ala does not even explain what those fires are. In other ayats it's explained more, but the explanation is not here. Allah Ta'ala says, وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ And a terrible place it is to go. What a terrible ending place. Allah Ta'ala after this mentions some stories of the munafiqeen because here in this ayat, we, the Rahmatul Al-Alameen, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the mercy on mankind, he has been told now, وَغْلُذْ عَلَيْهِمْ To be harsh and to do the jihad. So there must be some reason behind it why this great specimen and this great embodiment of mercy is being told to move away from that mercy and start being tough and, and rough on the people. Allah Ta'ala then gives some reasons why. Allah Ta'ala says, يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ مَا قَالُوا وَلَقَدَ قَالُوا كَلِمَةَ الْكُفْرِ وَكَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِسْلَامِهِمْ وَهَمُّوا وَهَمُّوا بِمَا لَمْ يَنَالُوا وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا أَنْ أَغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ فَإِنْ يَتُوبُوا يَكُ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَإِنْ يَتَوَلَّوْ يُعَذِّبُهُمُ اللَّهُ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَمَا لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ Allah Ta'ala says, يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ مَا قَالُوا they promise and use the word of Allah Ta'ala in a promising manner and they swear on Allah Ta'ala مَا قَالُوا that, we, that they did not say anything. Now what is this Allah Ta'ala is talking about here? This is the story of Jallas, Jullas. Jullas was a person who Sahaba understood to be a munafiq. He was a person who was a hypocrite and started a lot of problems amongst the Sahaba and was always uh, carrying tales and and backbiting and doing things like this. And his group was also those who used to sit with the munafiqeen. So uh, Jullas was with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Tabuk on their return. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam following these ayat, وَغْلُذْ عَلَيْهِمْ He was now speaking to all of the Sahaba and the Munafiqin were there also. And he was telling them on how dangerous this nifaq is and how these people on the day of Qiyamah will meet a very bad ending. He was speaking to them. After Nabi Sam finished his talk, he got up and walked away. And then Julas came to his other friends who were also munafiq. And he told them that, wow, look at that. If Rasulullah is saying that which is true, on the day of judgment, we're all going to be a bunch of donkeys. So to such an extent, he was kind of saying two things. He was making fun of Nabi Islam in a way. If he says what is true, of course it's true what Nabi said. And also he was making fun of the fact that we are those munafiqeen. And we're gonna, he's admitting that he's a munafiq. So when this happened, one sahabi, a mukhlis sahabi, Amir bin Qais, anhu, he heard this. And he told Julas that when we get back to Medina Munawwara, I'm going to tell Nabi Sallallahu what you said. And Julas cursed him and said, that, why are you going to say this? And you're just causing fitna and don't do this. So when they came back to Medina Munawwara, Amir bin Qais came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and told him about this. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he called Amr bin Qais and Jullas both. And in front of all of the Muslims in the masjid, he told them that both of you must promise that this thing happened. The first thing Jullas stood up and right away he said, I swear by Allah Ta'ala I never said such a thing. So Amr bin Qais knew that this person was swearing like this and he's using Allah Ta'ala's name. So Amr bin Qais did not promise to anything in front of Rasulullah. He raised his hands in dua. And he said, Oh Allah, you please inform Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi through ayat of Quran what is the truth. When Nabi Sam heard Nabi Sam, when Nabi Sam heard him say this, Nabi Sam himself said Amin. Himself he said Amin. And then Allah subhanahu wa taala sent this ayat down. Yahlifuna billahi ma qalu. When this ayat was sent down right away, and Nabi Sam recited this, then Julas his head came down in tears. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I was lying. I did say this. And he made tawbah, and he became a good Muslim after this. 
Allah Ta'ala had saved him from nifaq and he realized and made tawbah and he made the repentance and Allah Ta'ala he became a very good Muslim after this and became one of the great sahabis of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so in regards to this Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says يَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ مَا قَالُوا they are promising halaf halaf means to promise when a person says wallahi and promises on Allah Ta'ala and takes a swear so he, they're swearing on Allah Ta'ala and promising on Allah Ta'ala مَا قَالُوا that they didn't say that this is what the Munafiqin used to do all, all the time. وَلَقَدَ قَالُوا كَلِمَةَ الْكُفْرِ Allah Ta'ala says, and rather they had already said a statement of disbelief. Meaning what they said, what uh, Julas had said, that we will become donkeys. وَكَفَرُوا بَعْدِ إِسْلَامِهِمْ And they had disbelieved after they accepted Islam by having nifaq, after they said, أَشْهَدُوا أَلَّا إِلَا إِلَا اللَّهِ أَشْهَدُوا أَنَّ مُحَمَّدْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ After that they went into nifaq and they had become kafir after they became Muslim. وَهَمُّوا بِمَا لَمْ يَنَالُوا <coughs> Allah Ta'ala has given ishara and indicated towards one incident here where on the way back from Tabuk, the munafiqeen got about nine or ten of the you know, head munafiqeen had said that let's bring Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam towards this way and they hid and they wanted to attack Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and kill him. Now the billah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jibreel came and told him about this and Nabi Sallallahu went a different way and Nabi Sallallahu never passed through that, that pathway. Allah Ta'ala gives ishara and gives the indication towards this. وَهَمُّوا بِمَا لَمْ يَنَالُوا And they intended towards that which they could not achieve. Hummu. They had the himmat. They went behind the rocks and behind the and the and behind the you know the mountain and were waiting for Rasulullah to come. And they had the himmat and the courage enough to try and do this terrible thing. Kill Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But they could not get that. Nala yanalu means hasala. Any hasal karna. To get something, to achieve something. So they, they desired or they made an effort in that which they could not achieve. وَمَا نَقَمُوا إِلَّا أَنْ أَغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِ And they did not hate, they did not hate Rasulullah and they did not hate the deen of Allah Ta'ala for no reason. إِلَّا except أَنْ أَغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِ That Allah Ta'ala had enriched, had made Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Allah Ta'ala That Allah Ta'ala, that Agnahum Allahu wa Rasuluhu min Fadli. That Allah and His Rasul were completely independent from them, from the favor of Allah Ta'ala. This is the only thing that made them mad. They did not need Allah Subhanahu wa They did not need the Munafiqeen. Allah Ta'ala does not need them. And also Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does not need them as well. So they were mad at this. That why are they not dependent on this? And why are they getting, achieving so much Allah and Rasul without us? Allah Ta'ala for this mentions, فَإِيَّتُوبُ يَكُ خَيْرَ اللَّهُمْ Allah Ta'ala always, like I said, always keeps the crack of the door open for tawbah, and it's never closed. فَإِيَّتُوبُ If they make tawbah, if they repent, يَكُ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ يَنِي يَكُنْ خَيْرُ لَهُمْ It will be better for them. They should make the tawbah and repent to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. وَإِيَّتَوَلَّوْ And if they turn away, and they keep up with their nifaq and hypocrisy, يُعَذِّبُهُمُ اللَّهُ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا Allah Ta'ala will punish them. Alima, a very painful punishment. فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ In this world, they will die with nifaq and they will not be successful in their missions. وَالْآخِرَةِ And in the hereafter, like I said before, they will be فِي دَرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ In the lowest part of Jahannam. وَمَا لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ وَلِيِّ وَلَا نَصِيرِ And in the land, there will be no friend for them and there will be no helper. Allah Ta'ala will not have anyone, let anyone help them and there will be no friend for them as well. Uh, that person who leaves the deen, so he leaves the wilayat of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then who can be his friend? After this Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ عَاهَدُ اللَّهَ لَإِنْ آتَانَا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ لَإِنْ آتَانَا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ لَنَصَدَّقَنَّ وَلَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Allah Ta'ala here and Mufassireen have mentioned a kissa and a story about a certain person. His name was Tha'laba bin Hatib. Tha'laba bin Hatib. And this ayat, according to many Mufassireen, uh, is, is related about this person. Ibn Abbas has said that this is about Tha'laba bin Hatib. Many Mufassirin have related this. Uh, but the Muhaddithin have differed from this story. 
and said that it seems to be that the story, the hadith that have come about it, are quite weak. Uh, so we'll give the story anyway, but the story is not so strong. But many people, the Mufassirin, and of course those who bid wa'az and the people of Bayan, they like to give this story. May Allah Ta'ala, I hope, I hope it's not true <laughs> for this person's sake. Thalib bin Hatib uh, was a Ansari. He was a person who was a, from the Ansar. He came to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day and told Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that make dua that Allah Ta'ala blesses me with the dunya. Blesses me and makes me a rich person. Uh, so that I may help the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I may give. So Nabi Sallallahu told him, no, don't make this type of dua. Make dua for khair. Don't make this type of dua. You won't be able to handle it. So he said, please, please. He insisted. And Nabi Sallallahu raised his hand and made dua for this person. That Allah Ta'ala bless him and give barakat in his money and his risk and give him dunya. Uh, so then this person, uh, slowly but surely, started now, mashallah, a lot of barakat in his risk. His business started getting better. And he started accumulating a lot of animals, a lot of cattle, camels, and, and different animals, uh, which was a lot of money back then. So when he got enough animals, it started becoming too much. So then he moved out from the city and went to the uh, outskirts of Medina, uh, which it was very, very difficult for him now to come for the salah. He moved away from the masjid. So as he got farther away from the masjid, he was only coming for uh, you know, a couple of prayers. After that, he moved even farther out. When he got more money, he had to get a certain farm or something, take care of all those animals. And he went farther out, and then he started only coming for Jummah. Only Jummah. Once a week he would come to the masjid. And then finally he moved so far out, where he got one big land in between two mountains, and he used to have his animals there. He was by himself, and he totally left the masjid of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Very far out. Uh, when the ayat of zakat came, then Rasulullah sallam sent uh, his the people who were to collect the zakat. He sent them out to the outskirts to collect the money from the people who had the you know had the farms and things like this. The animals you have to pay zakat on them. So he sent uh, his sahaba to this person uh, Thalib bin Hatib. When Thalib bin Hatib saw them, so he was a little bit um, reluctant to give the zakat. He looked at them and said, "What is this zakat?" And I know about the jizya that the people who are non-Muslim, they have to pay a tax to us. But now we have a tax, and he called it a tax also. This is a jizya on the mu'minin. What is this? Uh, so he told them that, go around and collect from the other people, and then come back to me. So they did that. They went to the other people, mashallah, there were other persons who had less riches than him, and they gave their money and gave their wealth. Even one person gave the best of his wealth, even to be some said, take osat. And the person who's zakat, he's supposed to take the osat, that which is in the middle. Not too good, not too bad. That which is in the middle, so this person gave the two best and he insisted and said, no, give this, this is for the zakat, I want to give. Nabi Sam made a lot of dua for him and was very happy. But when they went back to, uh, to this other sahaba, Thalaba, so then Thalaba said, listen, I think this is a tax and I don't want to give this, this is not uh, khayr, I don't think this is good, and I'm not giving. So they warned and said, this was Nabi Sallallahu said, they said, no, no, this is a tax and stuff, I don't agree with this. So they went back to Rasulullah Sallallahu when they went back to Rasulullah Sallallahu so Nabi Sallallahu said, way uh, Thalaba. That Allah Ta'ala, he, he, he made the curse on Talaba. And he said three times, curse on Talaba, curse on Talaba, curse on Talaba. When Talaba heard about this and the news reached him, so he ran and brought his riches and brought it to Rasulullah Sallallahu When he came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so Rasulullah Sallam then warned him and told him that you are only doing this to get out of your situation now, I cannot accept this from you. When I told you the first time to do it and you didn't listen to me, then I won't take it now. Because you're doing this just to get just to get out of the situation. I warned you before about this. So then he went back and uh, Ulama say that he was uh, pouring the dust over his head in sadness. After the, and after this, Nabi Islam only a little while after passed away. After Nabi Islam passed away, then the same thing happened with Abu Bakr anhu, when he brought his riches to Abu Bakr, then Abu Bakr said, if Nabi Islam didn't take it, how can I take it? And the same thing happened with Umar and Uthman and the Khilafat of Uthman, this man passed away like this. So many ulama have mentioned this story, but Ibn Kathir, uh, I mean, Ibn Kathir has even mentioned also, who is great in hadith, but Ibn Hajar Asqalani has mentioned that this story, it's better we do not uh, you know, relate this story as much without knowing that this story, the hadith are very weak about it. There's a lot of people who, and we hope it is like that. Because for the sake of that person, may Allah Ta'ala protect us from having these type of problems where we get money and we turn away from deen. But the lesson is still there. 
that if Allah Ta'ala blesses us with some dunya, then we should not turn away from the deen of Allah Ta'ala. Most of those Mufassirin who say that it's not about Ta'laba, then they say just about the same Christian story, that this was about the Munafiqeen. The Munafiqeen had come to Rasulullah and asked Rasulullah to make dua for their dunya, and then when it was asked for them to sacrifice that for the deen of Allah Ta'ala, or some of it, then they did not do that. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions here, uh, that وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ عَاهَدُ اللَّهُ and from amongst them, there's a person who promises to Allah Ta'ala, لَإِنْ آتَانَا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ That if Allah Ta'ala gives us, if He gives us from His blessing, meaning if He provides us some sustenance, لَنَصَدَّقَنَّ Then we will definitely give it in charity. وَنَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And we surely and definitely will be amongst the pious people and we will act good after that. After this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا آتَاهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ بَخِلُوا بِهِ وَتَوَلَّوْ وَهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ Allah ta'ala says, and then when we gave it to them, when we opened up the doors of risk and sustenance to them, بَخِلُوا uh, بِهِ They became cheap with it. They became cheap and they squandered it and they held it. They became, uh, they became cheap. بَخِلُوا بِهِ They withheld and they did not give. They were miserly with it. وَتَوَلَّوا And they turned away. وَهُمْ مُعْرِذُونَ And they were rejecting. Meaning the time when he rejected Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's offer to pay the zakat. Allah ta'ala says, فَأَعْقَبَهُمْ نِفَاقًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمَ يَلْقَوْنَهُ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يَلْقَوْنَهُ بِمَا أَخْلَفُ اللَّهَ مَا وَعَدُوهُ بِمَا أَخْلَفُ اللَّهَ مَا وَعَدُوهُ وَبِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ Allah Ta'ala punished them with nifaq, with hypocrisy. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ in their hearts. إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يَلْقَوْنَهُ into the day until he meets them. So those ulama who believe and say that this story of Hatib is true, then therefore they would say that uh, Hatib, then Allah Ta'ala had had cursed him with this nifaq, and all the way till his death, he was not able to get out of this. Bima akhlafu Allah, because of the, them being indifferent to Allah Ta'ala, going against Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, akhlafu, to do khilaf with Allah Ta'ala, ma wa'aduhu, of that which he promised them. Meaning, they, they gave the promise that they were going to give the money in the path of Allah Ta'ala, but then when they got the money, they didn't give it. So Allah Ta'ala punished them by making them munafiq. وَبِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ And because of their lies also. They were lying as well. Allah Ta'ala had, uh, had given them the nifaq and hypocrisy. Allah Ta'ala after this mentions, أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ سِرَّهُمْ وَنَجْوَاهُمْ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبَ this is the thing that a person should understand to stay away from nifaq and to stay away from sin and stay away from doing wrong against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala says, Alam ya'lamu, did they not know? Anna Allah ya'lamu sirrahum wa najwahum. Allah ta'ala knows their secrets and also their discussions, najwahum. Whatever they discuss, Allah ta'ala knows. Sirrahum, and that which they do in open and that which they speak about, Allah ta'ala knows that as well. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ And Allah Ta'ala knows all of that which is the unseen. Allah Ta'ala knows the unseen, عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ So therefore you can hide nothing from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala even if it's in the depths of your heart or it's in your mind, Allah Ta'ala knows about it. So this alone should make a person stop and wonder and think about uh, being a munafiq or think about sinning against Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when the himmat and the... Uh, and the, and the and his aggression comes that he wants to sin against Allah Ta'ala. He should remember this that Allah Ta'ala is Allah al Ghayub. He can see all things. After this, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions more about the Munafiqeen and the terrible things that they were doing to the Muslims. Allah Ta'ala mentions, Alladina yalmizun al Mutawwi'ina min al Mu'minina fi sadaqat, Walladina la yajiduna illa juhdahum. Fasayas. فَيَسْخَرُونَ مِنْهُمْ صَخِرَ اللَّهُ صَخِرَ اللَّهُ مِنْهُمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Allah Ta'ala says, أَلَّذِينَ يَلْمِزُونَ أَلْمُتَوِّعِينَ Allah Ta'ala says, those who find fault, يَلْمِزُون الزام لگاتا ہے They find fault, أَلْمُتَوِّعِينَ مُتَوِّع or تَتَوِّع means to do nafl. So this is in regards to the sadaqah. 
those people who are giving the sadaqah in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are finding fault with them. The, why, would, why is he saying this? The munafiqeen, when Rasulullah would collect the sadaqah from the sahaba before war, whatever, he would tell the sahaba, let's pay the sadaqah. So whenever they would give some type of sadaqah to Rasulullah the munafiqeen would sit on the side and they would laugh at it. Yeah, bus, yeah. That's it. That's all he's giving. Right? Or if he came with a good amount of money, they would say, well, he's rich man. This guy's got more money than he can give more than this. So they would be making fun of the people as they are giving to make the people stop and be embarrassed to give. So this is mutawwi'een. Those who used to give, uh, you know, give the sadaqah, min al mu'minin fi sadaqat, those who used to give extra, extra from the believers, fi sadaqat, they would yal mizuna fi sadaqat. Meaning they would make fun of them in regards and find fault with them in regards to their sadaqah. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَجِدُونَ إِلَّا جُهْدَهُمْ And there were such sahaba also that they couldn't give a lot. They would only, لَا يَجِدُونَ They couldn't find anything except for the efforts that they had made. Meaning if they made a little bit of money, they would give that in the path of Allah Ta'ala, which looked minute. If a person comes in here and he only has $100 and he gives $90 in the path of Allah Ta'ala, MashaAllah, that's a great amount, a great sacrifice. Rather than a person who gives 10,000, when you go to his house, you can't even, you know, you can't even, you walk, it takes you 10 minutes to walk to the living room. Because he's so much money, you know, he's got millions and millions of dollars. He writes a $10,000 check and gives it, but he just bought a $50,000 car after lunch. Right? So for him, the sacrifice is less. The money is more, but the sacrifice is less. But that person who gets up and says, this is my rent money here. That's a lot of sacrifice. So there were such sahaba who were doing this. Illa juhdahum. Whatever effort they made, they gave that in the path of Allah Ta'ala. This is in regards to some one Sahabi named Abu Akil. Abu Akil came and when the sadaqah, when the call was given before jihad to give the sadaqah, so he came with about three pounds of dates. That's all he had, about a little bag of dates. And he gave it to Rasulullah The munafiqeen, they started making fun of him and started laughing at him. So Allah Ta'ala sent this ayah down about them. So Allah Ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَجِدُونَ Those people who don't find, إِلَّا جُهْدَهُمْ Accept their efforts. فَيَسْخَرُونَ مِنْهُمْ So they make fun. They make fun of them. The munafiqeen يَسْخَرُونَ يَسْخَرُونَ means they joke and mock at them. Allah Ta'ala answers, سَخِرَ اللَّهُ مِنْهُمْ Allah Ta'ala will make fun of them. And Allah Ta'ala mentions it in Maldi in a past tense form, showing that it definitely will happen. It's like it's already happened already. And what is that sakhr? Many of the ulama say, the ayat which Allah Ta'ala mentions in Surah Mutafifin, فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يَذْحَكُ on that day when those who were believers will laugh at those who were the disbelievers. And they will be on couches leaning back and laughing at those people who laughed at them. Allah Ta'ala will set this up for those people who are believers on a day of Qiyamah. Allah Ta'ala will make fun of them. And there will be a painful punishment from them. After this Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions, Istaghfir lahum aw la tastaghfir lahum إِن تَسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ سَبَعِينَ مَرَّةً فَلَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah Ta'ala mentions the deplorable state of Munafiqin as such that even the istighfar and the asking of forgiveness of Rasulullah Sallallahu for them it will not work and it would not help they have to get away from their nifaq in order for Allah Ta'ala to forgive them. Istaghfir lahum. If you ask for forgiveness for them, even meaning Rasulullah Sallallahu If you ask for forgiveness for them, O la tastaghfir lahum, or you don't ask forgiveness from them, in tastaghfir lahum sabaeena marra. Even if you ask forgiveness for them 70 times, fala yaghfir Allah lahum, Allah Ta'ala will never forgive them. They will have to make tawbah from their nifaq, even your istighfar Rasulullah in the amount of 70 times. And using in the Arabic language, 70 times means a lot. Right? When you tell your son, I told you 100 times. Doesn't mean exactly 100, that now it became 101. Doesn't mean that. It means I've told you so many times. So sabaina marra also in the Arabic language means like this. The sabaina marra, a lot of times. Even if you make istighfar from all day in Nabi Islam, la yaghfir Allah Allah Ta'ala will not forgive them. That's why, why is this? Because they have disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disbelieved in His Rasul. And Allah ta'ala does not 
guide those people who are sinners. And the main reason why they had their nifaq was because of sin. This ayat inshallah will be explained more uh, down where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions وَلَا تُسَلِّ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَا تَعَبَدًا In the next page, uh, ayat number 83, this ayat will be explained more, we'll connect it to ayats and find out what this ayat actually means and what that ayat means. And was Rasulullah allowed to make istighfar for the munafiqeen? Did he do it? Did he not do it? Why was he told not to do it? Inshallah, we'll explain that next time and more about the munafiqeen and more about the uh, war of Tabuk as we end off the Surah Tawbah uh, within the next few lessons inshallah we should end it so it was long and then we'll enter into Surah Yunus the middle 10 parts of the Quran which has to do more with the stories of the MBA and the times of Qiyamah and these things a little bit more uh, easier and interesting for the brothers inshallah Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq wa akhudah wa alhamdulillahi rabbilah wa jazakallah khair subhanallah wa alhamdulillah yes Of course, of course, yes, people remember what they do in dunya. Of course. That nadamat and that sadness would be there forever and ever what they did. Of course, they remember. It'll make their, it'll make their jannah even better. That they'll know that because of this, I've gotten this. Yeah, of course. Remember everything. In the dunya, remember everything. In jannah, remember everything. Munafik is a person who claims and says, he, he, he says he's a believer, but inside he's not a believer. He's a non-believer. That's basically what a munafik is. Now there's different darajas and categories of munafik, and a person can become munafik if he does certain things. There's signs of nifaq also. That inshallah will explain more. But basically the easy meaning and what Allah Ta'ala is speaking about here in the, Quran, in the Quran are those people at the time of Nabi Islam who professed and they said, that we believe in Allah Ta'ala and Rasul, but they didn't believe. They were fakes. So this is what a munafiq is.